Visual Studio Code is one of the most popular editors right now for programmers. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced coder, it's a great addition to your tool suite. You can run it on Mac, you can run it on Windows, you can run it on Linux, but you can't run it on your iPad. However, there is a way using a Raspberry Pi and an open source project called Code Server to get a kind of setup for your iPad. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. The setup takes maybe 15 minutes. Most of that is spent waiting for things to download. So it's not a big investment of your time. You need to do most of the setup from the terminal. So I'm going to do it SSH'd in from my iPad, uh, but you can easily do it from the terminal on the Raspberry Pi desktop if you want. Let's just dive straight in. Okay, so I'm here in a fresh install of the Raspberry Pi and I've done two things to it. I've given it a host name and I've connected it to the Wi-Fi so it can download packages. The first thing we need to do is install Node.js, which is the platform that Code Server runs on. The easiest way to install Node.js on a Raspberry Pi is to use the node source binaries. They're pre-built and you just copy and paste one command and it installs. Now, if you don't want to copy and paste one command, there are full manual instructions for doing everything step by step and I'll link all those below. So I'm just going to paste that command in and run it. That takes two or three minutes. And all this is going to do is make available to the Raspberry Pi the set of packages for Node.js. We have to install Node.js as well. If you don't want to type all these commands in by hand, don't worry. I will link below to a page on my website where all the commands are available for you. So with the packages installed now, I'm just going to clear the screen and we'll run sudo apt install Node.js to actually install Node. This can take two or three minutes, so you can just wait for it. Okay, with Node.js installed, we're ready to go. Now, if you have a 64-bit Raspberry Pi, there is a single line install command that you can run to get Code Server working. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on the 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna show the long form steps which work for both architectures. So Node.js has its own package manager called NPM, the Node.js package manager, and you can install Code Server with that, but the recommended approach is to use a different package manager called Yarn and install Code Server from there. And we'll first use NPM to install Yarn. So the first thing we need to do is use npm, sudo npm-g for global to install yarn and you're supposed to install code server from the yarn package manager. So let's do that. Okay, that's yarn installed and now using yarn, we can install code server. So yarn global add code-server. This command can take 10 to 15 minutes to run depending on uh, which pi you've got. So I'm gonna leave that and I'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, so code server is now installed and we can get going. So I'm just gonna clear the screen and the first thing we're gonna do is actually just run code server and get the default configuration file generated. So in the home directory, in a folder called yarn, in a folder called bin, there is a code server binary. We can run that. Okay, that gives us the default config. And at this point, we can't actually access the code server from the iPad because it's only listening or an IP address accessible to the Raspberry Pi. So let's shut it down, edit the config file and get going. So control C to come out, clear the screen again. And then we'll want to use a text editor. And if you're in the Raspberry Pi desktop, you can use the built-in text editor. But since we're in the terminal, I think probably the easiest one to use is nano. So nano, and then we're gonna open up the config file, which is in .config, a code server, config.yaml in your home directory. And the first thing we'll want to do is change this to zero and this to zero. That allows access from all of our machines on our network, which is great. And temporarily, we're just gonna disable the password or password authentication to none. And I'm actually gonna change the password while I'm here to something a little bit more rememberable, which is uh, YouTube. Obviously you choose your password and then it's control O to write to disk and control X to exit. And now we can start code server again. So now we're ready to access our code server from Safari and let's just do that. So I'm gonna switch in to Safari now and HTTP colon slash slash code pi dot local that I've already used this. So let's run that. A few moments to start up and there we go. We've got code server running in our iPad. Just a quick aside here for those of you who are Blink shell users, if you've upgraded to version 15 of Blink, then you have a built-in VS code interface that you can use to connect to your code server. Let me quickly show you how that works. Come into Blink and go to config, come to hosts. You'll want to configure a host for the host name for your code server. So mine is codepy.local. You type in your username, optionally your password, otherwise it will prompt you sometimes. And then in SSH config, what you want is this line here, local forward space 8080 space local host colon 8080. This is going to forward port 8080 from codepy to port 8080 on the iPad. And we'll use that to connect the VS code. Let's come out of this. And I'll show you how to connect. So we're gonna run code HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080. 
and nothing will happen. And the reason why nothing happened is we haven't actually opened up the tunnel yet. So first of all, we need to open the tunnel. So we're going to connect to the host we just created, SSH space code pi in my case. Now we're connected. In a separate blink window, we're going to run the same command we did before, code HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080. And in a few seconds, we'll pop code. And there we go. This is connected to the code server just as Safari was, but it's a nicer user interface if you have Blink code available on your iPad. Let's get back to the main setup. So there we go. That's Visual Studio Code running on the Raspberry Pi accessible from the iPad. And you could stop here if you want. This is a perfectly workable solution. However, there are a few things that you can do to improve this experience. And the first thing to do is to add an icon to the home screen to make this more accessible and at the same time, get rid of all the Safari window Chrome. So let's do that first of all. So I'm gonna come into here press the share icon on the iPad, scroll to add to home screen. I'm gonna change the title from code server to code server, nicer, I like that. And notice the icon here is nice. If you don't disable password authentication, you won't get a nice icon here. That's why we did that. We'll go back in later and fix that. So let's click add. And there we go, we've been brought to the desktop and there's an icon here now. So if I press this icon, there we go, we've got Visual Studio Code now with full window Chrome removed. All the keyboard shortcuts pretty much are being routed to the app now, not to Safari. This is a much nicer experience. I want you to take note of this warning down in the bottom corner here about insecure domains. I haven't found that warning to really be too true. Like none of the things it says won't work, don't work, but we can still fix it and we will do it at the end of the video. Okay, so now we've got a full screen app. What's next in our improvement of the quality of life? Well, we can make code servers start automatically when the Pi starts. Currently we're starting it manually and that's a bit of a pain. So let's do that. I'm gonna come back into my terminal. I'm gonna control C out of there to close that. Before we do this though, I'm just gonna re-enable password authentication. So I'm gonna use my text editor to open up the config file. Switch that back to password. Check that I got that right. That all looks good to me. So next time we restart code server, it will ask for a password. Now we want to make code server start automatically. On the Raspberry Pi, this is done with a piece of software called System D. Most Linux distributions that I, at least that I use, are, are using System D now. So these instructions should apply across all different Linux machines. It's worth saying, like you don't need to actually use a Raspberry Pi for this. You can use any Linux box, even a Mac if you want. I suspect this might even work on Windows, but that's not my area of expertise. The reason I like the Pi is because it's portable and I can carry it with me. And I have a video talking a little bit more about that linked above. Okay, back to it. So the first thing we need to do is tell system D how to start code server. And we do that by providing it with like what's called a unit file. And we'll do that in the terminal. So first thing is sudo nano and the path is etc slash system D, system D slash system. And then we're gonna call it code dash server dot service. And I have all the content here and I'll obviously link this as well. You don't need to, you can use the exact content here if you want. And again, control O to write the file to disk and control X to exit. And we can just check that we got that right by writing it out. That looks correct. Now we need to tell system D about that unit and that's pretty easy. So just clear the screen. Sudo system CTL enable code server. Okay, so that's enabled. It hasn't actually started code server though. The enable command just says, please start this unit at next start time. You could just start it manually now, but this is also a good time to check that it works and reboot the Pi, which is what I'm gonna do. Okay, so my Pi is rebooted and we can actually check that it uh, the code server did start using systemctl again, this time status rather than enable, and we'll do code dash server. And there we can see that it is running, which is great. And if we come back to the desktop and press our code server icon, press reload window, reconnect now. Eventually the password window will pop up and we can type in YouTube. Okay, great. So code server starts automatically. We've got password authentication re-enabled. Let's quickly take a look at installing extensions. Now, most of the extensions you can install in the normal way. So you'll find the extensions tab here and you can search for them. However, the marketplace that CodeServer uses is not the marketplace that VS Code uses. Apparently it's not 
allowed by Microsoft to use the full marketplace. There is a separate marketplace where most ex extensions are published, but not all. So you need to figure out how would you get an extension that isn't published into your code server, and I'll show you how. So the way we're gonna do this is get hold of the extensions package file, which is a VSIX file. And you can find these package files actually on directly on the marketplace website. So if we come to the website here and maybe search for Golang, and it's this one by the Go team. So I'm gonna press on that. And then if I scroll to here in resources, I get to download extension. And do you want to download it? Download. So now we've downloaded the extension file onto the iPad, we need to get it onto the Raspberry Pi, which is where it's gonna be installed from. And there are a couple of different ways you could do this. You can copy it with like USB key or whatever. But I think the easiest way is to use SSH to copy it. And there's a really nice way to do this in Blink, which is the SSH client that I use. I believe this also works in Shellfish, which is another great SSH client. And this is to basically mount the Raspberry Pi as a virtual drive inside the Files app. Let me show you how that works. So in the Blink config, I'm able to configure my host and I've got code Pi configured here and scrolling down. One of the things I've said is mount this, the, mount the home directory as code Pi in the files app. And now if I come to files, what we'll see is that Blink has put two locations in the, in the bar here, one for my other Pi and one for code Pi. And this is the recently downloaded file, Golang VSIX. And I can just drag and drop that onto Blink and it will copy that file across. And if I come back to Blink and look at the actual Pi itself and look in my home directory, there is the VSIX for the Golang extension. So now what we need to do is tell the code server to install it. And the easiest way to do that is to come back to code server itself, press command shift P, you can search for VSIX and it says install it uh, from VSIX, press enter. And then you can just pick the file path for the Go binary and it will install it. And you can see down here, we've got the Go extension installed. So if you can't find an extension in the marketplace that's in code server, you can download the VSIX file to your iPad, copy it to the Raspberry Pi and install it yourself. Really, really nice. Okay, so we've got one task remaining and that's to deal with that warning we saw earlier about insecure domains. The way we'll do this is we'll tell code server to start in secure mode. It will give us a certificate. That certificate will not be recognized by our iPad by default, but we can install it pretty easily and then we are good to go. Let's dive in. So back in your terminal, the first thing you want to do is to actually shut down code server and you can use systemctl stop code dash server. That's stopped. And then we're going to edit the config file. And we're gonna change cert to true. And we need to do cert dash host and it has to be the host name of your Pi. If you get this wrong, it will mostly work but one thing you'll never get to work is the nice icon on the home page. This took me ages to figure out. It was a real annoyance. So make sure you get the host name exact. It's codepi.local for me. And I'm going to come out of here. And we can now restart the code server. Let's start. We can check that that started correctly just to make sure we got our config correct. Okay, that's fine. And what we'll see now is that code server has generated some certificates for us and we need to get them onto the iPad and install them. So let's do that. So the certificates are contained in dot local code server, dot uh, local share code server on your machine. And you won't be able to access that directory from the little file sharing thing we just set up. So it's temporarily just copy the certificate file into your home directory. So we're gonna do cp dot local share code server code pi local dot crt. Your certificate will have a different name. It corresponds to the certificate host name that you set. I'm just going to copy it into the home directory here. Okay. So back in files, I can now see the CRT file is available. So I'm just going to press that. It's going to say profile downloaded. You can press close. Now come to settings. In settings, you'll see it says profile downloaded. So press that button. You can choose install in the top corner. You need to type in your passcode and then press install. Press done. Now, that's not everything you need to do. So come into the search, search for certificates. When it says trust certificates, press that and then enable full trust. Continue. Now, I just wanna warn you, there are some security risks about adding these certificates to your machine. The key file that came with your certificate, which was also in the directory that uh, CodePy generated, if you lose that or if someone gets hold of that, they can impersonate this domain name. So uh, be very, very careful with that key and keep hold of it. 
So because we've enabled this security mode, we need, we need to recreate the desktop icon. So let's do that. Come back into Safari. This time it's HTTPS codepy.local. The port number was the same, 8080. Type in your password. You can see we actually have the little lock icon in the bar now and the warning didn't pop up, which is fantastic. Come back to the add to home screen thing. And just want to leave this in here. Notice the icon is ugly. This is because the password was left in. We turned it off before to do this the first time, left it in this time to show you why I did that. All you need to do is go and disable the password temporarily and you'll get the nice icon back. But I'm just gonna do this for now, press add. And now you can see I've got my new code server icon, press that, it loads password, no warning. So there we go, that's VS Code running on the Pi, starting automatically when the Pi starts, running over a secure domain, no Safari window, Chrome, full window, and we know how to install extensions even when they're not present in the code server marketplace. This is such a good project for anybody who's got this Pi and iPad combo. It takes maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes when you're waiting for things to download, and you get a full powerful program as editor in your, at your fingertips. Such a good project. Hope you found this video useful. Hope you found this video entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and maybe hit the bell as well. We've got loads more videos coming about the Pi and the iPad combination. I'm gonna do a video about sync thing, which is a great way to share your files between all your machines. I'm gonna do a full deep dive on SSH and how to set it up on the iPad for the absolute best experience. So much more coming. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.